When you think of car culture, what countries come to mind? Italy? Sure. Yeah. Australia? Definitely. They do huge burnouts down there. Germany? They got the best road system in the world and some of the fastest cars to tackle it. Japan? Absolutely. That's on the list. What about Panama? Anyone thinking of Panama? Yeah, I wasn't either. Panama, that's the country, not the city on the Florida panhandle, is one of those places that isn't exactly on the top of Americans' to-do lists, despite its rich history, miles of beautiful coastline, roaring economy, and hats. So what the hell were we doing there? Here was the thought process. We wanted to go to Japan, to Australia, to Germany, to South Africa. But then, we told JF how much it would cost, and he laughed at us. Morningstar realized we could get really cheap flights with no baggage fees, a great Airbnb penthouse, and a discounted rental car from Avis in Panama. Then he said he knew a guy who knew a guy with some interesting modified cars. We could make a trip to a foreign country and live it up on JF's dime, all for the price of a couple of nights in Vegas. Though you can plan everything to a T, make reservations, line things up perfectly using the little bit of Spanish you can muster from the back of your brain, that doesn't mean that the second you land in a foreign country, everything can't go straight to hell. Tom books an Airbnb condo, it's gonna be dope. Got like, like four cars hooked up, we're gonna film two, and it's gonna be so sick here in Panama City. And then like six hours before we went to the airport, it all completely fell apart. 100%. The, 100%. The air, the, Everything I plan, where we're going to live, what we're going to film. The Airbnb turned out to be a bait and switch of some kind. So we'd cancel that and go with the Hilton Garden Inn across the street from a brothel. Then... <laughs> then the, everywhere is a brothel. <laughs> it turns out everywhere is a brothel. Then uh, our guy who was supposed to film his cars isn't answering his calls or returning emails. So these beers are a dollar. <laughs> While consuming some smoked meats, Thaddeus, the master of the internet that he is, told us about a racetrack not far from this particular chicken hut, and Google Maps seemed to confirm the presence of a road course. If there was something car related to film in this country, it was a solid bet you could find it somewhere in or around a racetrack. Turns out, though, that the track was the pet project of a local organized criminal, and when the government seized his property, rather than finish the track and open it to the public, they just put cows there. The land is now fenced off with some K-rails and a massive grandstand visible from the side of the road as the only remnants of what could have been an unbelievably gorgeous track. Panama is a country the size of South Carolina and does not, consequently, have a single motorsport facility of any kind. This was going well. In order to both calm my nerves and pass the time, and since our work trip was turning into a vacation due to lack of cars, we decided to spend the rest of the day being tourists. Heard they've got some kind of canal down here. Maybe one of the workers will just show up with a blown Mustang. Maybe there will be a single turbo swap Corolla just waiting for us in the parking lot. Since there's no apparent cars in this country, let's talk about locomotives. This is a General Electric towing loco from 1914. It's the OG Panama Canal loco. At first, going to the Panama Canal was a bit of a consolation prize, like, sorry your cars and house disappeared, you wanna see some boats? Depending on where you are, the screen you're looking at right now probably passed through it. But necessity isn't exciting. When's the last time you drove three hours and paid $15 to look at a semi-truck full of groceries? Maybe one of the boats would be holding a dragster we could borrow. But to be there in person and see the scale of it, you just have to stand and stare in quiet awe. Huge man-made channels 110 feet wide and 1,050 feet long. The walls are 8 feet thick at the top and 55 at the bottom. The steel locks themselves are seven feet thick and were hand riveted a hundred years ago. And it all still works. 26 million gallons of water fill the locks as the ship passes through. The ship enters with barely a coffee table's worth of space on either side. 
the Chinese cargo ship moved past us like a commercial glacier at a cost of $320,000, which is what it takes to get a ship from one side of the world 48 miles to the other. People rave about seeing the Eiffel Tower, the Golden Gate Bridge, but this canal overcame an obstacle of nature and in the hundred years since it's opened, has only ceased to function three times. America used to build things like this. The canal was a distraction, sure, from our predicament of having nothing to film. Given that data usage in Panama costs $20 per megabyte, just checking your email could cost a Benjamin. Our strategy at this point was literally to drive around the city and try and flag down any modified car we saw. But we didn't even get that far. Before we even made it into our next traffic jam, our rented Ford Ranger let us down. This has gone very well. We are in uh, a country that I didn't really want to go to in the first place. Our, our, our premium mid-size pickup truck, which is neither premium nor good, has a flat tire now. This place sucks. The Arepa was really good though. This, this trip was not worth an Arepa. That one Arepa was worth no, it. No, it's not. This was fucked. We'd lost our penthouse, all our subject cars, aged half a decade sitting in traffic, and our flat tire was taking hours because part of our salvage title shitbox was actually cutting the tire every time we hit a bump. We seriously considered filming taxi cabs as that seemed to be the only type of customized vehicle in this entire country. Returning to America and cutting our losses came up more than once. And then, the phone rang. It was Yoel, one of our possible subjects, and he wanted to help. When Tony Bourdain goes to Latvia, he doesn't just walk around by himself, he has a local show him what's up. If you go to a new place without a fixer, you're gonna have a bad time. And here in Panama, Yoel Bolanos was the Ari Gold of fixers. Custom cars was the game, and Yoel had one that would absolutely work for a film. But Yoel also had friends. Yoel's first mission? Get us on board a drivetrain swap Diablo Rojo built for street racing. Since we now had time to kill while waiting for a callback from Yoel, Thaddeus, the master of the internet, suggested we go for coffee. This is Panama City's historical Costco Viejo district, where multi-million dollar penthouses abut literal slums, where locals sell hats to tourists, where the president lives, and where street art is frequent and colorful. The most amazing part is the intermingling of brand new construction with buildings standing since the 1700s. At night, locals bring out portable furniture and turn ruins into nightclubs. Bars spring up in the alleyways in between buildings around rooftops. The pulse of the city can be felt in the Casco Viejo on a Friday night. Think New Orleans French Quarter, but older with a Latin twist. The Casco Viejo holds other secrets, such as the Geisha, the world's most expensive and best rated coffee. Which brings us to the Bajareque Coffee House, an unassuming, quaint shop across the street from a literal ruin that you can smell from blocks away. Your nose draws you into the smell of roasting beans and warm smiles from the baristas. Their geisha beans are grown at high altitude in the mountains in very small batches, and anywhere else in the world will sell for $350 a pound. 100% of their worldwide roasting is done in the back of this single shop, and only 75,000 pounds are produced per year, all pre-sold. Want some? Too bad. The only place to buy it in the States is in San Francisco, where it costs about as much as a night inside a D-list celebrity. But if you happen to be in Panama City, a cup here is a much more reasonable $650. It's super good, I'm not gonna lie. It's awesome. really, really good. <laughs> but this, this little, what, four ounce cup of coffee costs as much as three beers. <laughs> or, or, one, or one cocktail drink at the bar, top shelf. The Casco Viejo is not only the best neighborhood to hang out in, but also has the best view of the city, as it was built on a peninsula as a walled city within a city to protect its residents after Panama City was sieged in 1671. See those awesome modern looking skyscrapers on the water there? Yeah, 
we were supposed to be staying there. We're not. Eventually, with a phone call from Yoel, we set off to do what we flew thousands of miles to do. Film some cars. Except this was not a car at all. The Diablo Rojo. Red Devil. In the past, this colorful school bus was the method of public transportation in Panama City. Well, in the transport, we have directly 12 years. 12 years in the transport. And it was for recognition in this country for the method of Diablo Rojo. Things that today don't exist today. Because they already compensated and already took out of the system and modernized what is the transport. But there are still people like my person who still have buses to do special trips, trips, Vice versa, turismo, y por lo menos me gusta, pues. All privately owned, the buses got their names because they would race each other from stop to stop in order to pick up as many 25 cent fares as would fit on a bus originally meant for 45 kindergartners. Owners would customize the buses with murals, slogans, chrome, and loud stereo systems in order to attract as much attention as possible. Now, Panama City has banned Diablo Rojos from El Centro in favor of the more traditional state-owned metro buses, but they still operate in the outskirts of the city. The engine is an international DT-466. It has advanced timing. Uh, it was modified, uh, the turbo was modified uh, to perform better in the race, in the races. Um, the bus has uh, a Spicer Dana 6052 Series A transmission and the differential is an Eaton 937 ratio 411. The state of this particular bus was dubious at best. The tires were retreaded retreads with holes in them the size of ping pong balls. The steering wheel had about a half a turn of lock in it while traveling straight and appeared to be made of duct tape. The stereo system was made of uncovered plywood and featured eight 18-inch subwoofers with a 15,000-watt amp, one of the windows was out of a house. Everything rattled, but from what we heard, El Pollo does have a winning record in 10-kilometer highway racing. So there's that. Y el sonido, música. Believe it or not, they race these fucking things. There is a race tonight with this and two other buses like it on the highway in Panama. I'm not joking. They say this bus will go 200 kilometers an hour. There are so many of these Red Devil buses. The back, the back left tire on this bus looks like it's going to fall off. Oh, uh, that was Zach in the chase car behind us. He says, the back left tire on this bus looks like it could fall off at any second. All right, let's see what she got. Power! <laughs> Sorry, I heard it wrong. It was 140, there's 150. 160 kilometers an hour. That's 100 miles an hour in a school bus right now. No seat belts, no safety. Passing an oil tanker. Send up. There's 170. 170k. Holy God. Yes. Go, go. Yes. See. He's calling him out. Door open. Oh, good. Our first three days in Panama may have been a little rough. Yes, we lost the faith. Yes, we contemplated bailing and going home. But once we found our fixer, once we had some sweet geisha coffee, and once we stared death in the face by exceeding 160 kilometers an hour in the single sketchiest vehicle I've ever stepped aboard, we realized things were looking up. And we should stick around and see what happens. Tomorrow, Yoel is going to take us inside his spectacularly clean garage and throw us the keys to his highly customized Suzuki Samurai as we go off-roading in the forest high above the Panama City skyline. Plus, as it turns out, he has another friend with one of the fastest cars in the entire country who just can't wait to show us. Stick around 
Now that we got a fixer, Panama's getting fun.